Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks, today on Ink Dependence we're going to talk about nibs. These nibs. Uh, between these pens here I have examples of lots of different kinds of nibs uh, that you might encounter out in the wild or maybe at, say, the DC Pin Show, which is coming up this weekend. Or the San Francisco Pin Show, it's in a couple of weeks. Or Dallas, or Colorado, or any of these other pin shows that are coming up soon. And uh, you're going to go to a pin show and you might want to go and find a nib grinder to alter one of your current nibs uh, to something more fancy, uh, some, uh, I don't know, italics or uh, architects or all that kind of jazz. Um, but you might not have had experience with these nibs. You might not really know what you're looking for going in. You might not know some of the pros and cons. So uh, what I want to do today is take these pens and uh, show you some nibs and tell you a little bit about what makes those nibs the kind of grinds they are. So let's zoom in and take a look. Okay, so let's start out with your most typical sort of nib, which is the round nib. This is a Platinum Nice Pure. And this pen has a broad nib. Now, as you can see, the tipping material here is round. Regular old nibs have round tipping material. This is the iridium stuff that's on the tip of the nib. Uh, and uh, these are round. So this is your typical fountain pen sort of nib. Uh, and it will give you uh, this kind of line. That's a fun green ink, huh? I wrote my name, kind of the most boring sort of thing I could possibly write, but whatever. It'll give you a little bit of a, of a comparison between these things. So uh, you can see all the lines are, um, you know, they're, they're fairly sharp on the edges, but it's also like it looks kind of roundy. Uh, there's no actual uh, line variation, nothing like that. With a regular old nib, you're not going to get line variation. Uh, you're just going to get the same weight of line the whole time. Okay, so let's take a look at a different kind of nib. Let's look at an italic. This is a Franklin Christoph 31. And this has an italic nib. These are ground by Mike Masayama. This is a, uh, uh, what is this, a medium? I want to say this is probably a medium. Uh, this is definitely a medium italic. Um, italic nibs, as you'll see in this little illustration, are, um, th well, they're kind of square. They're like a big rectangle, and they're sharp on the edges. You can also have other kinds of italic nibs that are not necessarily sharp on the edges. You can sort of round the edges up. If you do that, you end up with like a cursive italic or something of that nature. You'll see that here in these images. By the way, I'm taking these illustrations from uh, Mark Backus's page. Go to his page and check out those videos and those images. They're very good. I think the images were put together by uh, Matthew Morse. Um, so this is the italic nib. The italic nib for me is a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, let's go ahead and put it over here. You see what you get are very broad, or I guess relatively broad, uh, verticals and very thin horizontals. Now for me, the reason I say this is not particularly comfortable is I have to consciously think about where my fingers are. Now if you're somebody who does a lot of um, you know, uh, good handwriting, like copper plate or any kind of dip pen stuff, this is going to sound silly. But a lot of us tend to rotate our nibs when we're not paying attention. So and you get very skinny lines like here in the K and then these sorts of things. Now I tend to rotate my nib like this. And so the reason that the uh, the italic is not particularly comfortable for me is that I tend to feel like a digging in sensation because I'm going straight against this sharp corner. And so for me, the italic is not ideal. Uh, if you are a person like me and you tend to rotate your nib in a little bit as you write, uh, you're not gonna like an italic all that much. Well, you might, but you'd have to think about where it goes because you really want to have it like this, yeah? So, that's the italic nib. They're squared off. Next on that line are, uh, let's go to, uh, here we go, stubs. This is a Conklin Crescent. This comes with a stub. You will see factory stubs on these kind of uh, pins fairly often. And this, as you can see, has a nib that is just square. Now what you can't see here, but you will see in the close-up picture that you're looking at now, is that the edges are kind of rounded up a little bit. This is a kind of a roundy stub. Now it doesn't have any tipping material. If you look at it here in the Stark profile, you'll see there's no tipping material on the end of here. This is just steel. There's nothing at the end. So where you're on the regular round ball, you have this bit. There's none of that here. 
it's all gone. Well, actually, it was just never on this nib. They never bothered to tip it because it's a stub. And a stub, while I don't have this one inked, do I? No. Uh, well, I don't have this one inked, and that was maybe a bad idea. Um, what it will write with, uh, what it will write like is pretty much like an italic, although it won't be as sharp on the edges, and it's more forgiving if you tend to rotate your pen a little bit. Actually, there's a little bit of water left in there. You can totally see it on the camera. That's neat. All right, so, so far we've got regular round ones. We've got sharp italics, formal italics. They are sometimes called cursive italics, which are a little bit rounder, and then the stub. All right, so going down the line a little bit more, we've got uh, this nib, which is particular to Franklin Kristoff. You're not going to find it anywhere else. And as you can see, it's got something in common with all of these. This is called the SIG. This is the SIG, S-I-G, and that is the stub italic gradient. Boom. Uh, and what you get with a, sub, uh, with a sig nib is somewhere in between the sharpness of a uh, of an italic with the sort of roundy forgiving nature of a stub but you get a little bit more line variation than you do with a stub not quite as much as you do with an italic but it is a very comfortable writing experience this is a nib that was uh, developed by um, Franklin Christoph's guy Jim Rouse so if you go and get, go to the Franklin Christoph table you will see a whole array of, of sig nibs this happens to be a broad sig so it's very large in comparison to these other two but what you can have are broad big broad downstrokes, and then pretty skinny cross strokes. All right, so not as extreme as the others. All right, now here are a couple uh, that, uh, oh, well here's, uh, mm -hmm, let's look at this one right quick. This is a music nib, but I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about this one, uh, but notice that this is very broad, like the uh, stub was here at the tipping, but also it's got rounded tipping. Right, so it's not stub, it's not exactly an italic. Music nibs are a different sort of beast and they're made for making very large strokes. And this thing is a paintbrush, even compared to this guy, uh, but also very, uh, at least comparatively, skinny cross strokes. So you end up with very nice looking stuff. You can quickly do uh, music notes if you like, but that is a music nib. And typically they have um, two slits, so you end up with three tines. There are a few of these around. You can find one at Franklin Kristoff. You can get these from Platinum. Uh, Sailor has one. Check out my music nib video to uh, see all of those in action. Oh, Pilot has a good one. All right. Now, here's one that gets a lot of play online. This particular pen is not inked. I've just cleaned this one out, but I have a one that's very similar. And this is the Architect Grind. The Architect Grind, as you'll see in that illustration there, is kind of an oddball. Uh, it's also called the Hebrew grind or the um, Arabic grind, and it's made for uh, for making very skinny uh, up and down vertical strokes and very broad cross strokes. It's like an, a reverse uh, stub or a reverse italic, I guess. But it's also kind of wedge-shaped. As you can see here, the wedge shape is evident, even though we're not super close and tight on this nib. When I turn it this way, when I turn it this way, it looks pretty skinny. And that's because it is. So the architect nib is meant for going very, very, uh, so, um, let's see, let's look at this one right here because this has ink in it. <laughs> this is also a version of the architect nib. So you get very, very skinny verticals, but you also get pretty decently broad horizontals. Now this is a fine nib. Uh, so there's not as much line variation as you will have on say a broad, but you can definitely tell that there is some. And this is the, um, uh, well, this particular version is called the Blade Turk. <laughs> you can probably hear my cat in the background. She wants you to play with her string. Now, the Blade Turk is actually a really pretty nib. Uh, it's taken some getting used to for me because, like I said, I rotate my nib. And if you're a rotator, things like the Architect, things like the Blade Turk, and things like the Italic are not going to be ideal for you because they will probably dig in. It's going to require that you pay attention to every single stroke that you make with that pen. <laughs> Meow. That's my cat. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, the Blade Turk and the Architect. The Blade Turk is a little bit more forgiving than the Architect. It's not as long and sharp. It is a really pretty nib, and I wish I could show it to you even closer than this. In fact, here, I'll pop up a photo. And what you can see 
is that this nib is very uh, like it's very finely ground. It's a very it's a one of the most beautiful grinds I've seen. Um, Mark Backus does an amazing job with those, and you're the, he's the only person that does those. So if you want a blade Turk, go see Mark Backus. It's like a Hebrew italic or like an architect, uh, which are the same thing, but it's uh, it's smoother and gentler on you. Okay, so there are a couple of oddballs left. Um, here is one of them. This is a Franklin Christoph 45, and the special thing about this one is that it has an oblique nib. Now, obliques are not particularly well understood, I think, by a lot of people in the fountain pen community. Um, there are two kinds of obliques, and they are corrective nibs. So if you have, uh, if you are like me and you have an odd writing angle, these might be the way to go for you. You can have a left foot oblique, which is shaped like this one. And as you can see here at the tipping, it's shorter on the left side than on the right side. So it looks like your left foot, and that's how you can remember it is a left foot oblique. Now a left foot oblique is for a right-handed person. I don't have a right foot oblique because I am not left-handed, and those are mostly for left-handed uh, left writers. And what they will do is they will let you uh, turn the pen a little bit. So if you're a person that tends to correct inwards, you can still have very skinny uh, verticals and broader, wetter horizontals because more of the nib is in contact with the paper than if you turn an italic. So if you write this way, and you have a very nice writing angle, don't get an, obli an oblique. You're not going to like it. My wife, Audrey, has a really hard time writing with an oblique, because if you try to write correctly, I can't even replicate it, because I'm so used to writing poorly. Uh, but she has a very hard time with any of these obliques. And for me, it writes perfectly, and I love it. But for her, no good at all. So if you're going to get an oblique done, beware that if you have a if you really like writing with a cursive italic or a cursive or rather an italic nib, the oblique is probably not going to work well for you. But if you're a person that has a bit of trouble with an italic, it tends to dig into the paper and skip, and it feels bad in your hand. Try out an oblique. These are really cool nibs if you're a person like me that tends to rotate inward, and you're just too lazy, like me, to fix that problem. All right, so this is the oblique. Left foot oblique. All right. One more I want to show you. This is uh, a custom nib. This is one that I got from a good friend online. Thank you, Denise. And this is a Waverly nib. The Waverly nib goes like that. <laughs> it looks it looks bent, right? And it is bent, but it's bent on purpose. So you'll find Waverly style nibs on pilot pens. They will have a WA on the nib that will signify that it's a Waverly. Um, and it will be, uh, it's an odd looking nib. It's just kind of an odd duck. If you look at it this way, it looks as though it has been bent. Sometimes you'll find these on things like, on places like eBay, and they'll say, uh, badly damaged nib, and it looks like this. You're like, uh-huh, nope, that's a Waverly. I know what that's for. You'll also find them on old Schaefer's. Uh, probably there are some old Parker's and such. I've got a set of Schaefer desk pens that are like this, and they're like this to give the tip a little bit more rigidity and make it a little bit more comfortable to write with. Um, especially if you're using those old Schaefer pens, you have to press through some carbon paper. Those are built, kind of built up at the tip, and they are very, uh, uh, very strong there, so you can push on carbon paper without worrying about it. This one, not so much, but it does give me an interesting line variation. And if you go up on the angle, you can make it very, very fine. And if you go back, oops, shallower on the angle, you can make it fairly broad. So check out the Waverly. Looks like that. Uh, check out the Waverly if you're uh, interested in a fairly unique sort of uh, pen. These are only, these only come in a couple of pilot models, uh, but they are around and you can find them. Uh, they're not super rare or anything, but um, definitely check out the Waverly. All right, so we've taken a look at a lot of different kinds of nibs. Okay, so here are all the nibs we've looked at here, minus the music nib. I took that one out because there wasn't room, frankly. Uh, and so here at the bottom, we have the regular round tipping. We have here the italic. We have here the stub, here the uh, sig. These two are some version of architect nibs, the blade turk and the architect. Here the Waverly, and here the little oblique. Uh, these pens are going to, uh, your writing experience with these pens is going to vary depending on, how, on your writing angle. So if you have an excellent writing angle, you can definitely get away with pretty much all of these except for the oblique. You don't want an oblique if you have a good writing angle. If you have an inward sort of writing angle, you're going to want to get rid of the, uh, the uh, architect for sure. That one's right out. 
you're going to want to get rid of the italic for sure. That one's right out. The rest of these will be good for you. If you have an extremely bad writing angle, that is you uh, rotate your nib all over the place, you pay no attention to how you put it to paper, uh, I would say stick with either the regular old round nib or the stub. And uh, those are very forgiving and anybody can write with those. So anyway, there you go. There's some brief advice. Hopefully this has been helpful. It's a little bit hard to show nibs uh, on a lot of different pens in the same video, but I have given it a shot. So there you go. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer those. Have an awesome time at a pen show. Uh, get those nibs ground if you want to, but hey, here's the other thing. Don't be afraid to just use a round nib on a pen. There's nothing wrong with standard pen nibs. They're perfectly good nibs. Uh, you don't have to get work done on a pen just to like it. But if you decide to, know what you're getting into. Don't go for that curse of italic if you tend to rotate inward. You're not going to have a good time. Even though it's fun to tell people you have a cur curse of italic grind, make your pen uh, write the way that you're going to love it. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is love your pen. So that's it. I'm Mike. This has been Ink Dependence. We've looked at a whole passel of nibs here. Here's all these pens. Uh, I will see y'all in the next video. I will hopefully see you at a pen show. If you can make it to one, definitely give it a shot. It's great to hang out with pen people. If you see me, come up and say hi. Uh, I will see y'all later. Peace out. Pen. One second. Clipsy, shush. Shush. Did you like what you had, what you saw in this video? If so, please click one of these links. You can watch more videos if that's what you're into. You can subscribe to the channel. You can click that like or bell icon or whatever, or you could even become a patron of my channel. Click on that button right there, and that will tell you how to be a patron uh, to help keep this blog rolling.